Hello fairy friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be joining you again today on the Reverse Confetti YouTube channel. Today I have a very very simple card to share with you. It's one of my favorite designs to do with small critter stems. I've definitely done this before but I thought these ducks were perfect for it so I had to do it again. I'm going to be using the Spring Pals stamp set by Reverse Confetti, but first I am just drawing a guideline in pencil on my watercolor cardstock. Um, I used the grids uh, or the grid lines on my grid mat to line up my ruler, and I just drew a, a line a centimeter from the bottom edge. The measurements doesn't matter, but <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I am going to be using the Spring Bells stem set, like I said, and I put the large duck and the small ducklings on two separate acrylic blocks. You don't have to do this, but I am also going to be stamping these on the envelope later. So I figured it would be easier to just keep them on the blocks. I am stamping these in Versafine Onyx Black ink. I am going really slowly. This is actually sped up by 200%, so it's twice as fast as I actually did it, and it's still quite slow. <laughs> um, I'm just lining them up on the bottom uh, with the feet on that line I drew, so it's really easy to stamp them on that line with the acrylic block. And I just make sure to go really slow so I get a nice impression, even though it's just an acrylic block. Um, not a misty stamping tool <laughs> um, and I'm working on quite textured cardstock since it's a uh, watercolor cardstock. For the sentiment I didn't want to take a risk so <laughs> I used my misty stamping tool here. I lined it up in the center of the panel and I just stamped it in that same black ink. I can now emboss this all at once because this ink stays wet for a long time and embossing powder also just Embossing powder wants to stick to dry cardstock most of the time. So even if your ink is almost dry, it will still stick to your ink. You don't have to rush stamping and embossing at all. If you use ink that is meant for embossing, you will have no problems at all if you wait a little longer. Now all that's left to do is color these ducks and they are so easy to color. I use some watercolors because I'm in a watercolor mood these days. I get moods for coloring. Sometimes I just like to use alcohol markers for months on end and not touch my watercolors at all. Now I'm in my watercolor phase. So I'm having a lot of fun with these Karen brush markers and I just add a, a little bit of color to the shaded area of the ducks and the ducklings. And then I blend it out with a paintbrush just and, and just some clean water. There are bl blending brushes available in these Karen brush markers. I like working with the paintbrush. Um, <laughs> you do you. I think the effect you, or the color result you get is a little bit brighter with the uh, blending marker but I just love working with the paintbrush so much. <laughs> I'm so used to that. So that's what I use. I am layering a couple of colors on top of each other to get sort of a blend. So I'm adding orange to the large duck and also some brown to mute it a little bit. Um, usually mom ducks are brown, but I didn't want her to be completely brown. I added some orange and some yellow for ducklings and that's pretty much it. I did heat set that just to speed up the drying process because these Karen brush markers do take a while to dry, especially on that embossing line that I did. Now I am adding a matting layer on my um, white note card, just some cream colored cardstock, and I'm adding some cardboard to, my, to the back of my watercolor panel. That will give me some really sturdy dimension. It's super cheap, of course, because it's just recycled packaging. And yeah, it's really sturdy in the mail and it's also lighter than stacking a bunch of layers of thick white card stuck together. I'm folding a yellow envelope to go with these ducklings. <laughs> I am using some really bright yellow card stuck for that and my VR Memory Keepers 123 punch board. Once that's folded, like I said, I am going to stamp these ducks and ducklings uh, on that envelope as well. I am just going to use some embossing ink for that. But first, I always like to glue my envelope shut uh, because that just 
makes it so the area is a little smaller to work with and it's just things aren't shifting around when they're glued down so this is easier to work with for me. Now I am also dry, drawing that guideline on there with some pencil as well and then I can stem the ducts. Now I always erase the pencil mark um, a little bit before I start stamping especially when I want to stamp it in white or a light ink so um, you won't trap the pencil behind that white embossing. Not that you would necessarily see it, but if I mess up the embossing somehow, it will still be trapped under that uh, Versamark ink. So erasing it a little bit beforehand, just make sure that you won't notice your mistakes as much. I am just adding some wow Wow, bright white, super fine embossing powder and heat setting that. And then you have that fun repeat design of the ducks and the ducklings uh, on the envelope and the card as well. I love this simple card. It's so fun to do. You can do this with almost any critter stamp, any small critter stamp. It's such a fun design. And I love, love, love that sentiment from the Spring Pals stamp set as well. I'm a lucky duck to have a friend like you. It's so fun and so punny. I love punny sentiments for critter stamps. I hope you like the card. I hope you like the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. You can also subscribe to the Reverse Confetti YouTube channel for a new video every week. Um, and there might be some extra bonus videos coming up for a new release, possibly. So I hope you check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.